Hello, Midnight TCG members. This is Midnight Fox, and we're coming to you with this week's Competitive Edge podcast. This week, we have myself and Ginzo. How do? And Eddie. Waka waka! And this week, uh, and probably for the next week or two, we're going to go over some newer decks that are getting some buzz over in the OCG that uh, we haven't quite gotten everything over here yet. But uh, some new support cards or new deck types that are going to be coming out in the next few sets. So this week we decided to go with an oldie but goodie. It's actually starting to create a buzz with what it's done over in Japan. And it's an old arch type that older players really like, like myself. And I've said it for podcasts forever. Please give us more support for harpies <laughs> so evidently maybe konami actually listens to our podcast <laughs> they gave it to us and uh they've actually given us some really good support cards uh so kind of just a overview first thing we're going to go over the new support that's coming that would be harpies channeler harpy channeler sorry don't want you Wicking the wrong thing. It's not Harpies. It's Harpy Channeler. Um, Hysteric Sign and Harpy's Pet Mirage Dragon, which are the three we're getting the soonest. So, kind of the first one to go over would be Harpy's Channeler. Uh, it's a 1400 attack, 1300 defense, 4 star. You can discard a Harpy card, special summon one Harpy monster from your deck in face-up defense position, except Harpy Channeler. You can only use the effect of Harpy Channeler once per turn. While you control a face-up dragon-type monster, this card's level becomes 7. This card's name is treated as Harpy Lady while it is on the field or in the graveyard. So if you're wondering why you're seeing Harpy's Pet Dragon soar up to $80 to $100, this card right here is the reason why. Basically, this little girl right here, along with Harpy's Pet Dragon, is a one-turn big eye. Take your opponent's monster. Also, uh, she's also treated as Harpy Lady. So if you're playing grounds in your deck, it's another free chance to blow up your opponent's spell and trap zone. A uh, lot of buzz going on about her. And I believe she comes out in Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy. Yes, that's actually the set that she comes out. So the next set we're getting in May. And uh, while the attack is kind of low, the effect, more than likely, you're just going to be using her for Xyz material with Pet Dragon to go into a big eye. So if you don't have Pet Dragons, I don't know if I would really suggest investing highly in her as right now like i said pet dragons are 80 to 100 dollars but if you do have them definitely look at investing in this girl because she's going to make pet dragon so broken in the deck and i mean unless you just want extra options to abuse with hunting ground which that's one of the main things i love about harpy ladies is they don't per se except for one two and three have effects but hunting grounds can be so deadly to some spell and trap heavy dependent decks so i'm going to say though that genzo probably has a better uh ring on things on uh the newer card so i'm going to pass it on him and let you let you hear his thoughts on harpy channeler well I think you covered Harpy Chandler pretty good. Um, I don't think her effect is that hard to interpret into the game. Um, uh, I think you, you mentioned the big eye play, which is pretty key. You know, like, there there is an argument being made, you know, whether you should or you shouldn't run Pet Dragon. And one of my close friends in the game says that you shouldn't. Like, he doesn't like it because he doesn't like drawing it. And I'm of the opinion that I actually like it because of the two Wink 7 Ixies options it gives you in the side deck, which are kind of dynamic plays, um, especially now. And for for the foreseeable 
future. I think Big Eye and Mecha Phantom Beast Dragostack are going to be really, really important cards to to the meta and to how the game shapes up. And Harpy Chandler gives you access to both of them, you know? So, like, if Big Eye's not the right play because you say you're early in the game, you just make Dragostack. And, you know, you have the utility of his effect being able to destroy your card. You'll be able to attack, but still you, you have removal with him. And then if if you are going to attack, then your opponent can't destroy him. So their only real, you know, commonly played outs would be something like a dimensional prison or a compulsory. So <clears throat> that's like the most dynamic thing that Chandler offers, you know, besides, again, being able to recruit from the deck at the cost of a discard, uh, as long as it's a harpy, obviously. But, uh, yeah, so I like the card. Uh, and it's actually piqued an interest in Harpies, you know, with me that I haven't had before. Well, the good, I mean, the one thing I really like about it is she herself can search out Dragon. It's a Harpy yeah. monster except herself. So you can search Dragon, and then you have a Dragon on the field. So, right, yeah, that's the dynamic of it, is that yeah. just by having her out, you have Big Eye. I'm going to steal your monsters. It's just it's great when you think about the card and the access that it gives you because you know that your extra deck is going to be pretty much rank four uh, heavy and then you're going to run, you know, your two rank seven options being Big Eye and Dragosack. But, I mean, that gives you a, a lot of utility because we know, you know, what we can get from the rank fours from Gaga Ga Ga Cowboy to Abyss Dweller to Steel Swarm Roach, Black Ship of Corn. Lightning uh, Chidori, since she's a Lightning woman. Chidori, exactly. And a lot of, well, all the level four she can drag to the field with her effect will be wind as well. So exactly, and Chidori is a really nice card in, in decks that can put it on board. Eddie, your thoughts on Harpy Chandler? If she works the way that I want her to work, Oh, dear God. So, first turn, I summon Harpy Lady Chandler. I ditch X Harpy, except for the new erotted Harpy's brother. And I summon Harpy Dancer. I target, I take Harpy's Dancer, I target Harpy Chandler. I bounce her to my hand. I re-summon Harpy's Chandler. I do the her effect again, and I bring out Dragon, or, you know, another Harpy Dancer, if I so choose. If I activate that Harpy Dancer's effect, bounce Chandler back to my hand again, summon it, and then, you know, just keep the thing going. But, I don't think that's how it's going to work. So instead, it's just... Yeah, Dancer's still a few sets out, so it has yeah. time to change before it hits the so, G. Yeah, so I'm thinking with Harpy's Channeler, I'm thinking it's drop, take, use Dancer's Effect, bounce, drop Channeler, and then um, bring out the dragon. Or just drop Channeler, bring out the dragon itself, like you guys have made mention of. What? And then if you wanted to use Elegant Egotist to bring out another Chandler and then just start bringing out another Dragon overlay for two fours and then overlay for two sevens. Well, you couldn't bring Chandler out with Egotist. You couldn't? Because she's not considered Harpy Lady in the deck. No. Wow. Oh, well, boo. <laughs> what, what, I do like, what I do like about Harpy Chandler, though, and her discard effect is... Because she's her name is treated as Harpy Lady. More than likely, if you're going to be running this deck, you're going to be running three queens. You're going to be running three cyber harpies or Harpy Lady ones or Harpy Lady two. Har so you can discard that and use special summon cards like Monster Reborn, Hysteric Sign, or Hysteric Hysteric Party, Call the Haunted. So you're still going to get used by discarding a harpy to the graveyard to summon out that pet dragon into level 7, or into your rank 7, either Big Eye or Drago Sack, and you can use Call the Haunter, whatever, and you're still going to get to blow up something in the back row. 
if you built the deck based mostly around harpies. But yeah. that's more what we'll go into uh, later when we talk about some of the older support. Yeah, but it's just... If you wanted to really, because of having the effect of the harpies hunting ground, and being able to destroy their back row, and then if you really wanted to, with some of the older support that we already have in place, with, like, harpies... I know that uh, we talked pre-podcast... Genzo talking about uh, Harpy's pet baby dragon, saying not much play, but for me, it would see just at least one because of its being able to have three Harpy cards on the field and then destroy one card at will. And if you're only destroying one monster, you can make a play for a swing for game kind of thing because of Harpy's pet dragon being such a powerhouse and having uh, like Channeler and then it and things like that on the field. I definitely think there is some utility that Baby Dragon can bring. I just doubt its consistency. But again, when I first built the deck, it was in my deck. So I imagine that people will run the card because of the fact of what you said. Pet Baby Dragon is useful um, to gain Channeler's effect of turning her into a level 7. I mean, it is useful for that in the deck itself. As long as there's another harpy named card out on the field, or har- or dragon out on the field, she she becomes a level seven. So I mean, there's a small utility to harpy's pet baby dragon, but most of your guys who are going to eventually take this and play it at regionals or YCS events, they're going to be spending the big bucks going after the pet dragon. Because that's well, not only that, it's just when you also look at uh, Baby Dragon's effect, and I think the, the reason why I cut it from my build was Chandler can help you um, spam, you know, and then you would have a card like Hysteric Party, which we'll touch on later. You know, there's, uh-huh. so there's situations where you will have three other Harpies on the field, but because it requires three to get, you know, the destruction effect, you know, like, it just seems like you're not always going to be playing in, be- in best case scenario mode, so you want to kind of have cards that uh, that allow you to play the game on a more standard level and then have explosiveness. And I think Harpy Chandler does that enough. Well, with going over Harpy Chandler, our next card, uh, Harpy's Pet Mirage Dragon, the Xyz monster that's getting released in the set. It's three level four win monsters, so it is a bit of a hefty price. Probably best abused with something like Hysteric Party, but uh, we'll get to that later. But this card's effect can only be applied while it has Xyz monsters. It can attack your opponent directly. Your opponent cannot target Harpy monsters as targets for an attack or card effect. During each of your, sta- your end phases, detach one Xyz material from this card. So you've got the ability to basically go through and punch through for 6,000 damage directly because you're only going to have three turns of being able to do it. But with so much destruction, unless you're running one to two copies of Party, how much utility is this really going to have into the deck itself? I think if you're running Harpy-dependent, and you're running the parties and enough support to mass summon harpies, this is a good option to put in there. But if you're not running enough support, uh, really, she gets her abuse from the harpies themselves and their ability to spam with a card like party. Uh, I mean, unless you wanted to run like three calls and once reborn and all that special summoning stuff, but then that takes away from other options in your deck, such as destruction, bounce ability, etc. I like her, but I don't think she's going to be in every player's build, just because she has to detach an Xyz material during the end phase. The only way I could really see that being effective is... Uh, is it Bulkasaurus that allows you 
I keep no, I think it's Freezer Dawn that allows you to remove from your uh, from it instead of the your other Xyz monster, isn't it? Freezer Dawn. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's getting into like some really situational that's, yeah, that's scenarios. Waste, waste. Yeah, exactly. Wasteful scenarios. But uh, I mean, for me, I'm a Harpy fan, so. Would I run at least one copy myself? Yes. Are a lot of your players going to actually run this? Probably not. They're more going to stay with Shockmaster as something that's going to cost them three level fours just because he's a little more effective than that. Uh, yeah. What, what, what's your thoughts, Ginzo, on uh, Harpy's Pet Mirage Dragon? Yeah, so this is another one, you know, like... I don't know, maybe it's a standard approach for more duelists, but for me, whenever I'm building a, an archetype uh, specific deck like Harpies, like my first thought is, well, let's just pull up every card that I can run because it's a Harpy-related card. So that's what I did, and so it, it was immediately in the extra deck. And now, while I won't say I've given up on the card wholly, I will say this, I'm torn. Because I don't think the the last part of the effect that says detach one Ixie's material from this card during each of your end phases, I don't think that'll be a deciding factor on whether players decide to play this or not, because we all know who go how good Tyrus can be for decks that can make her, and her effect is the same thing, and she only gets two turns uh, to be protected by her effect because of the, deta the forced detaches in the end phase. What, what I think is the deciding factor for, for players will come down to their preference, obviously. And then also, I have to invest three monsters in this card. Three, three level four win monsters. So, are my three level fours better applied to this, uh, the Harpies, Pet Mirage Dragon, or to something like Shockmaster, which can close out games, or even something like Vylon de Sigma, uh, which can eat up a boss monster? And those are the two cards I've been trying or moving back and forth with this card because it's hard to overlook the effect that, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the card can attack your opponent directly. You know, sometimes that's lethal damage, especially if you have your opponent backpedaling, you know, so they're defending in the mid game or defending in the end game. Like, this can help you get to the end game because then it, it doesn't care if your opponent has a 3,000 attack monster on the field or five spirit reapers. They don't care. They're going to hit your life point. So it's kind of dynamic, but I really think it, it will come down to when you build an extra deck, what are my resources better applied to? The the gimmicky effect of Mirage Dragon or something that has very concrete results in how it affects games such as Shockmaster? The one thing I do like about it is that it does have one up over on Tyrus on the fact that Tyrus can still be targeted by cards like D Prison and Compulsory. Yeah. But this says for an attack or card effect, which means your harpies are safe from getting bounced, removed, or destroyed. So, I mean, there is great utility with Harpy's Pet Mirage Dragon, if you think of it in that regard. Then if well, there's also the Harpy's flip side to the Tyrus comment. Because you said Tyrus can be bounced or banished. Well, if they have Dark or Torrential Mirror Force, that takes care of the Harpies. Because those don't target. That's true. But it's a way to shut down, like, your D-Prisons. That, that's become one of the staples in a lot of decks now. Uh, that and compulsory because of Xyz monsters because it's just the most effective way to deal with them because like Zen mains oh go ahead activate your mirror force I'll just blow up something on your field and yeah like Maestro can stay, save himself although he doesn't get to blow up like Zen mains so destruction can actually blow back up in your face. That's the only real utility I really like about Pet Mirage Dragon. What about you, Eddie? Pet Mirage Dragon for me. I enjoy having it be able to attack my opponent directly for two grand. 
the downside to it, of course, being the deep prison, the uh, mirror force, and things being able to stop it from attacking. But because of things like Harpy's Hunting Ground, MST, Heavy Storm, this deck is going to be haterating so hard on that back row. There's not going to be <laughs> very much time for your opponent to be able to sit and think about being able to stop you from destroying their back row. So, in all honesty, this thing can be used for a quick 6k strike. And then, if you want to, there's, I think there's an equip card that allows you to, or a magic card, spell card thingy, that allows you to equip it to make it to where the monster has one more detach. So. And, uh, I mean, as far as Harpy's Pet Mirage Dragon, at the end, uh, after you read through this, it'll kind of mention it in there. We have a screenshot of a deck list. It's not saying this is tier one. This is what you need to play. It's just an idea of a deck list that could abuse Pet Mirage Dragon, possibly. But I don't, we don't want to tell you that this is the deck you need to build. It's just an example that you'll see at the bottom of uh, the video. Yay for ideas, helping people. <laughs> Woo. So that kind of brings us to one of the cards that's probably getting the most uh, hype, and that's the release of Hysteric Sign. When it's a continuous spell card, when it's activated, you add an elegant egotist from your deck to you, or graveyard to your hand. So you run one to two copies because you can bring it from your deck or your graveyard. During the end phase, this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there from your hand or field this turn. Add up to three Harpy cards with different names from your deck to your hand. You can only use <clears throat> one Hysteric Sign effect per turn and only once that turn. Really, the bummer to that is you can only use the effect once per turn. And it, they pretty well cover it. You can only use one Hysteric Sign effect per turn and only once that turn. So they kind of covered loopholes around that because we know how us players like to look for loopholes in cards. But uh, basically, uh, this card, which uh, we'll get into later, there's a certain card, me and, and Ginzo were going back and forth about uh, that can really abu uh, abuse using this, and uh, just the ability to spam to your hand harpy cards. This is a great way to get channeler to your hand early if you open with it. And if you do decide to play it, then it's going to have your opponent thinking twice about uh, activating an MST against it, because if they send it to the graveyard by activating that MST, Dust Tornado, what have you, then you're just going to get to search three Harpies and bring them to your hand. And the other thing to think about that is going back to Harpy Channeler, you're going to have three discards for her. So it's an easy way to spam out Pet Dragon or whatever Harpy you want to bring to the field. But I don't want to go too much into it. I think this is one that Ginzo's probably going to have more of the dynamics on, so I'm going to let him talk more about uh, hysteric sign. Okay, so yeah, this is, um, I find myself saying this is the best card, or could be the best card of the deck. Um, I, I think it's a choice for the players, you know, like, uh, I've done a lot of testing with this deck, a lot. Um, and I, I pretty much put it this way, you, you can decide, I'll leave that up to you, but the best cards in this deck are Summoner Monk, Harpy Chandler, or Hysteric Sign. Um, and we can go ahead and say that Chandler and Sign are competing for first place and Summoner Monk has second place. That's fine. But Hysteric Sign makes a card like Summoner Monk that the average player looks at and goes, you know what, Summoner Monk, it seems kind of neatsy, but it's not really that good. 
Well, his Theric Sign makes uh, Summoner Monk a great addition to the Harpy deck because if you run like I run, I run one to two copies of Sacred Crane, and so it's a great waiting play. You can summon Summoner Monk, discard Sign, special summon Sacred Crane, draw a card, and since your Hysteric Sign was sent to the graveyard from your hand or from the field, as it says in the card text, in the end phase, you're going to search for three Harpy cards. So, I mean, there is a lot of advantage to be gained from this one card. You know, setting it on the field when you, when you open kind of weak and your opponent activates MST to try and push a play through. Well, they went one for one destroying the Hysteric Sign, and then their MST becomes a neg three because you're going to go plus three in the end phase. That's really good. <laughs> um, so there's just a lot of good things. Like um, Hysteric Sign allows you to only run one Elegant Egotist, and outside from a couple random builds that I've seen that were trying to make the deck a kind of turbo deck, uh, one Elegant Egotist is all you need because a lot of people happen to look over Hysteric Sign's first line, which says you can add one Elegant Egotist from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So if you've already used Elegant Egotist, you can sign it from your graveyard and use it again. So I like that. I like that it allows you to run Elegant Egotist because Elegant Egotist becomes pretty much a special summon monster. So, uh, again, as you know, you look through this effect of this card, it's just really good. You know, like what Ben mentioned, you know, you can only use uh, one of Hysteric Sign's effect per turn. <laughs> That's good because, say, you have a Hysteric Sign in your hand and you have a Zephyros in the grave. You could activate Sign add an a Egotist from your deck to your hand, and then special summon Zephyros from the graveyard and return the sign to your hand. And if it wasn't worded that way, you could just summon Summoner Monk, pitch, grab a level 4 monster, and it would just be ridiculous. You know, so it, it's probably best that they put that. You can only use one Hysteric Sign effect per turn. Because uh, if not, the deck would, would just do really silly things uh, on a much grander scheme. Um, but yes, this is probably one of the best cards in the deck uh, just for what it offers you alone. You know, like, if you have this face up on the field, it's almost like a, a Starlight Road that your opponent knows is there. They're not going to want to get rid of that card, you know, with, like, a heavy storm, you know, unless they can ask, it, they can put a Thunder King Ryu on the board or, you know, end the game that turn because of the advantage that, they would, that, that the opponent would get in the end turn. So, great card. Again, Summoner Monk, in my opinion, is the hands-down... Um, ying to a Jiang. They just, they just do so many great things. Like I said, you know, you know, just the monsters that I've been running in my variant of this deck, you know, allows a bunch of different um, plays. You know, from holding plays to explosive plays. You know, because again, you can get the Sacred Crane, which immediately draws you a card, and, and things start kind of replacing themselves just through Sign and Summoner Monk. So I really like their card. What about you, Eddie? What do you think of uh, Hysteric Sign? Hysteric Sign's really, really gonna bring these, bring this car, this deck. I don't want to say tier zero, but I want to say at least tier one to one point five. Because, let's face it, Harpies haven't been in the spotlight in ever. Ever. <laughs> Ever. And now that you've got this sort of thing going on, and plus with what you can side deck into with this deck, you're just going to start going off like crazy. So. You'll actually let's... see in the deck that I put in there, like, Harpies can side into Black Wings. Just because of grounds. Yeah, it's, the side is wonderful. Yeah, so. I think you bring up a good point, Eddie. Yeah. You know, trying to to question the actual value, because it's something that I actually didn't think about when we first came with the idea to cover harpies. But as I was thinking about it and thinking about other decks that will be coming to the game at or around the same point as harpies, almost makes harpies like an unfortunate um, occurrence, if you will, because mm -hmm. the deck has a lot of great plays from. You know, just like opening easy to really dynamic plays, 
but it's going to be being released around the time that Prophecy get that one card they're waiting on, and also when Elemental Dragons will start hitting the TCG. So it kind of puts it in perspective. You mentioned in the tiers, you know, and, and what you would value it at. And see, it's one of those things to where it's like, that's what I like about the doing the whole this podcast sort of thing, is that everybody's got their own special flavor that they bring to the table every week. And so, you know, while I might not be the most fluent in the game, I'll at least bring something to where I'll make your freaking ears go, huh? It's a thought. But that's another topic for another time. <laughs> well, with uh, covering the newer cards, we look back at some of the older support. Uh, first one I want I want to cover, uh, really one of the superstars to it, before I go into monster support, is Hysteric Sign, or not Hysteric, Hysteric Party. Just because that's your ability, if you dump your Harpies, to go into an easy Harpies Pet Mirage Dragon. Basically, you get to special summon as many Harpies as you have in the graveyard. Harpy ladies. And if you've got ground on the field, you can just go pop, 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 and start popping that backfield. And go into easy XC summons and still have your normal summon. And if you're running other things that special summon might like call, Monster Reborn, etc., this the ability to special summon and abuse Harpy's hunting ground is just unreal with Hysteric Party. Another reason why uh, that's another one of the cards that's going up. Quite a bit of the Harpy's cards are going up. That's because Harpies have been forgotten for so long, and we don't have a whole lot of reprints of things like uh, Harpy's Pet Dragon, uh, Hysteric Party. There's not a whole lot of... Hysteric Party, I think, was, what, released once in a set and once in the Wind Structure deck, and that's it. I actually think it was just released in the Structure deck. I mean, I could be wrong, but... Um, it may uh, have only been in the structure deck, but I know it's kind of silly. It's a very hard to come by. It's very hard to come by, especially for a common. Yeah. So, what's your thoughts on a hysteric party and what it brings to the deck itself? Um, <laughs> very, very generic and very basic. Um, it's another explosive addition, you know, like, of course, if you get it early in the game, you know, you just kind of want to sit on it, you know, because it's only going to get better as the turns pile up. Uh, it's an easy discard to pay. Again, you can discard one card from your hand, so it could be hysteric sign. And that's just goofy. Also, you can discard a Harpy, and the same Harpy you discard, as long as you had one different in the graveyard besides that one, you can get it as well. So, it's just, it's really good. I mean, it allows MST to become a Rageki, but I mean, you really can't, it's really not fair to a card to grade it because there's a card in the game that counters it, you know what I mean? Right. Because if that's the case, no card's really good, because there's <laughs> cards that counter everything. But I, I like it. You know, I like it as a one of. I wouldn't run any more than one. I, I just couldn't do that. You, you'd just be wasting too many utility spots for, for multiple. But at one, it's, it's just enough. Just like I, I feel Pet Dragon at one is just enough. I could just about, yeah. I can tell you, though, that from the releases, it's going to be one of the harder ones to find for the deck, even if you want to run one, because the Wind Structure deck is back in like oh five oh four oh five somewhere around there quite a ways back so trying to get your hands on one is going to be hard but if you can it does add an extra beefiness to the deck and it definitely takes pet mirage dragon from potentially playable in the deck to playable in my opinion what about you eddie well, first of all, I'm looking at this card, and I'm uh, I'm thinking an auto, like, depending on how many back row your opponent has, I'm thinking an auto plus five, because um, 
Especially someone as many harpy monsters as you can. As long as you got the harpy's hunting ground on the field, you special summon up to potentially four, I want to say. I would say I would say a five plus. Let me go back to that just real quick. A five, plus five plus. Because you're summoning as many harpy monsters as you can. Okay. So say you're able to get back four. That's a plus four for your side of the field. That's a minus four for your opponent's side of the field because you're blowing up four of their back row or four of their spells and trap cards. Four. Oh no. No no no. Um, yeah, because Harpy's when... hunting. No 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 no. Harpy's hunting grounds are gonna read this like hysteric party is gonna put all those monsters on the field at one time, not in a row. So you would only activate the effect of uh, Harpy's hunting ground once. Hmm. Um, you, I would say you were right, but at the same time, I'm going, I don't know. So that's what's got my brain thrown off. Do we want to check the ruling on that just to make sure real quick, or? I'm trying to pull it up right now. That way we can double check and cross check, so. Yeah, it's anyway. like multiple times. Can it, no, it's like called the haunted. Okay, so it only kicks off once. It only yeah. kicks off once. Okay, so excuse me, Zen. Apologize, derp on freaking loose again. Okay, anyway. It's continuous just for the purpose of destroying the summon monsters. Yeah, I, I get it. So that's that's the ruling on it. So if they're overlaid, you're gonna not you're gonna be able to um, they're not gonna be able to be destroyed, right? As long as they're overlaid. Well, as long like if you use overlaid. them and your opponent MSTs it. No, I'm just saying it's if you fine, use yeah. them and you exceed. Yeah, if you yeah they, they become detached. Materials, they're no longer attached. Okay, yeah. so once you exceed with it, you're you know you're getting the whatever you want to get out of it. If you want to get the shock master, the mirage dragon, the uh, one-eyed skill gainer, whatever you want to get from it, it's just do 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 do. And then Chidori, you, stupid yeah. at the deck. Yeah, and then you've got that little uh, space for the other. If you get a plus, if you, you're five monsters on your side of the field. You've got the uh, the black ship corn or that one card that um, you guys were talking about at the beginning, the uh, Sylphine, the Sub-Zero Siren. you got that that you can throw in there. Yeah. So, there you go. The one thing I want to say that I really love about uh, Hysteric Party is a card that's actually starting to gain popularity. This is your another way for you to get around it. And we might as well just go ahead and cover Grounds while we're talking about it, because we've been talking about it a lot. Number one, Grounds gives all your Harpy monsters, your Wing Beast monsters, plus 200 attack. So... Bam. 200 attack. Whenever a harpy lady hits the field, it blows up the spell and trap. So what's actually been starting to get teched more in with so much destruction available, like Mirror Force, Torrential, Heavy, blah, 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 is Starlight Road. It's become more prevalent in decks. The great thing about running Hysteric Party, along with Harpy's Hunting Ground, is the fact that they don't target multiple. They don't target multiple cards. Each of the harpies targets one specific card, so it skirts some, uh, the potential of your opponent having Starlight Road laid out. It's a great answer to Starlight Road if you know your opponent runs it, or yeah. it's possibly sighted, because they each pop one by one by one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hunt and Ground does allow you. Uh, some flexibility. Uh, I noticed that generally, well, I won't say, say generally, but I'll, I'll just say I use Hunting Ground. I only run two copies in my build, aside the third. Um, but I do use it quite a bit to activate the effect of Summoner Monk because I wish I was lucky enough to open Hysteric Sign or at least have Sign in my hand every time I had Summoner Monk, but unfortunately it's not the case. But what, but what you mentioned is like when you come up against those decks that, that put like three... So sometimes four or five back rows, you already know you're in for a grind game. 
And so <laughs> Hunting Ground allows you to grind very well. You know, sure, they can have the MST, but again, you know, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't equate that too much. You know, MST's at three. It's going to be at least at two and 99% of decks probably. So, you know, you can't really factor that into whether you, you run it. But just because Harpy's Hunting Ground allows you to just slowly, one turn at a time if you have to, summon a Harpy, pop a card, it allows you to play in the grind game, which is pretty important. And it kind of synergizes in the way the build's moving along, too. It's a great way to ditch Queen. Have a Harpy in there just for a free discard. Discarder, get Hunting Ground to hand. That's just pretty, like... Uh, like, again, like I was, when, I, when I jumped in on Eddie's point about trying to figure out the tier, like, uh, it's definitely not going to be tier zero. Uh, and it quite possibly might not be tier one because of the decks that will be uh, relevant at the time when it hits. Um, I would grade it but probably 1.5 to 2. At least, yeah, somewhere in there. But it's still going to be a good deck, and that's what's odd. It's going to be one of those, like, people don't consider rabbit variants to be tier one. They consider them to be a rogue deck now or an anti-meta deck. But the deck is really good. You know, you can look at the deck and be like, wow, you can see how it performs every event, you know, still currently. I'm pretty sure it got a top in this weekend's YCS as well. So that that's what uh, Harpies will be, in my opinion. They'll, they'll have a lot of power, but may get overlooked because of the other decks that are relevant at the time. Um, but going back to the, to the reason why I made this comment was, if you just look at all the cards, yeah, it's because you said... Uh, ditch queen for ground look at look at the deck uh and then look how cyclical the deck can be you know you have hysteric sign pulls egotist from the the deck you have hysteric sign if it's sent from your hand or the field or your hand uh or field to the graveyard you get to dig three harpies cards um harpies chandler lets you special summon egotist itself lets you special summon and you see how cyclical that is how how how, like, all the cards kind of touch themselves in, in a circle, like, the He's deck moves exactly really fluid. What I was going to say, that's one thing I've always loved about Harpies, and they're getting even better with the new releases, is that they... Well, they haven't been like this before. They haven't been like this before. <laughs> this is new, and I think that's what's so intriguing about the deck. Okay, so, since I know we're running the uh, Elegant Egotist, my question is, are we running Harpy Lady Sisters as well? I personally don't go well, that's that, because really, Harpy Lady Sister, I think it's just too slow. I think it's better to go, in my opinion at least, with just like Harpy Queens, Harpy Channelers, and your choice if you want to go one, two, or three. But personally for me, I'm a Cyber Harpy Lady guy. I want three copies of her. Okay, yeah, I'll run three. Did um... Yeah, I did. Um, my first instinct for any deck, <laughs> if it gives me the ability, if it gives me the option to control with the deck, that's my first instinct. You know, like, I, I come from the era of the greatest control decks ever. So that's always my first um, intuitive response to new information is how can I control my opponent with this? And so my deck is, uh, my Harpy deck, that is, is... A variation of control it allows me to control my opponent it allows me to be proactive and reactive to game states um but there is uh since you mentioned the sisters there is a variant that i was hinting to a little earlier um that main decks three egotists so it can spam the field it's like a turbo version of harpies um while i haven't tested the deck i have seen at least three different versions of it um, and so, like, what it, it aims to do, obviously, is drop a massive amount of bodies. And then once those bodies have been used generically, like, I just summon monsters attack you. Like, main phase two, they can overlay, you know, because Sisters is level five, right? No, nope, level six. That's the, only, that's the only reason I don't run her in there. If she was five, it'd be easy, Adria, Satyrus, et cetera. Volcosaurus, Volcosaurus yeah. Freezer Dawn any of them but since she's yes, a level please. six really her only thing she's going to go for is uh no, there's a lot she can go for and that's the that's the notion so like they can either put the bodies on the field to 
to, to, to make the push to, to, to OTKU, or they can use those bodies to overlay into important cards like Insector X, a beetle. Equip a card from the graveyard, other players, pop a card, and then overlay into Thunder Charger, which has a 2600 body that tramples. Then they can also make Photon Strike Bouncer, which helps you control gores. Um, and they also have Sword Breaker and Force Focus. So, the, yeah, okay, that's what the deck does. Bouncer, I might. Force Focus. I don't know. It's a niche card. It's a niche card. It's a player's choice, I guess. Yeah. Because right. you also see it in Monarchs and stuff. But yeah, to answer your question more directly, sorry, Eddie, would be in the standard version of Harpies, I don't see Sisters getting play. But there are, I guess a great word right now would be, there are niche decks that attempt to do something different, which is always good, you know. But I don't think it will equate to the same amount of success as the kind of like, I don't want to say standard, but more efficient build. See, the reason why I ask this question is because I see a card on here on uh, as I'm looking at it right now the triangle ecstasy ecstasy spark ecstasy thank you I was like my ecstasy I'm not sure that right ecstasy spark for the direct being able to make the yeah. sisters 27 attack and your opponent cannot activate any trap cards and the effect of every trap card on their side of the field is negated so it's like a trap stun within a spell so, and plus being able to get the Harpy Sisters up to 27. I just think the, the overall getting the combo to your hand is the only thing that kind of turns me away from running it is how often I'm going to run into being able to run the combo. Well, again, that all becomes... Um, paramount on the deck builder's decision making. Like, if they're going to be uh -huh. running the sisters, the triple ecstasy, and possibly even, like, I totally forgot about that card, Eddie. Thank you. The triangle ecstasy spark. Like, if, if that's their goal, then that's the way the deck will be built. And I could also see them running maybe cards like uh, One Day of Peace. Um, also, Duality. Maybe even Upstart Goblin, where it seems counterintuitive because, you know, Duality won't let you special summon. Upstart Goblin gives your opponent a thousand. But Upstart Goblin, if you run three, it allows you to run a 37-card deck because you're not always going to be playing in best-case scenario mode. You're not always going to open the nuts. You're not always going to have the hand you need to end the game. So, like, they would probably make it very, very specific, and it would be very linear in nature. It would do what it does, or it would lose. <coughs> well, I guess, uh, I mean, for me, I, I just... For myself, I don't see... Sisters, for me, is not quick enough, and it's taking up space that I think could be used by other things. But, yeah, it's, it's more of a player's choice. Which Agreed. Kind, kind like, of, it's not my choice either. It <laughs> goes into the next, the next set uh, of where you decide you want to run uh, either Cyber Harpy Lady, of course, 1800 attack, and she's treated as Harpy Lady. That's all she does. Some players would say, I'm going to run one, two, or three. One is the only one I could see as being potentially viable, Harpy Lady 1, because she boosts all wing, she boosts all wind monsters by 300. Two negates flip effects. About the only one we see anymore that's used commonly is Rico. And three stops monsters that battle with it from attacking for two turns. And all three of them have low attacks. The only one that has any utility, really, is Harpy Lady 1, and that's just mainly for the boost. For me, I'm a Cyber Harpy Lady guy. Yeah, she might not have another effect to offset that, but she's treated as Harpy Lady, and she's going to, if I could have grounds out, going to come out at 2,000 instead of being like Harpy Lady 1 or any of the other ones and... If it's one, she's going to come out at 1,800 tops. And two's going to come out at 1,500. Three's going to come out at 1,500. Three's not going to be really usable now because people overlay everything synchro summon. So the monster at battles isn't going to be around for two turns. Like I said, number two, flip effects. They're, other than Rico, they're pretty non-existent in the game anymore. The only one with... Any flexibility, really, 
and this is all, like I said, player's choice, is uh, one. For me, my utility to go to when I looked at building the deck, and because I've used it in the past, before uh, Black Wings got all their support, I ran a Harpy Black Wing hybrid. And uh, my go-to then, even, was Cyber Harpy Lady. And that's just because it's a 2,000 attack body. Back then, that was great. Now, there's so many beat sticks that that's not as great as it once was. But still, if you're going to go with this deck, my personal opinion is looking at the Cyber Harpy Lady as your support. So I'll take the opposite road. Where you where you take you you it'll be good cop bad cop. <laughs> You're the good cop. You said I'll say this is my opinion. I'll say this. Thunder King Ryo destroys this deck. Why? Because there's so much tutoring that your deck needs to do. Harpy's Queen grabs the field card. Um, Hysteric Sign adds Egidus to your hand. Hysteric Sign's effect when it leaves your hand or field to the graveyard adds three Harpy decks or, or Harpy cards from your deck to your hand. So my thought is this. Harpy Lady, with its effect, becomes 1,600. With the field spell as well, becomes 1,800. That doesn't handle Thunder King Ryo. And Harpy Lady 1, you are correct, is the only one of the 1, 2, or 3 that I would ever suggest running, and I won't suggest running, and I would tell you it would be a mistake to run it. Exactly. Because you can run 3 Cyber Harpy Lady, who has an 1,800 body, that doesn't handle Thunder King Ryo, but with the field spell, it will, because exactly. you'll be a 2,000 attacker. So, like, to me, there's no, there's no argument. Once they created Cypher Harpy Lady, all those gimmicky Harpy Ladies just went in the box and to collect dust, and that's it. That's kind of what I think of them, but that's, I just leave it up to player's choice. The only one that could be potentially playable, in my opinion, is one, and that's just if it's player's choice. Really, the go-to lady is Cyber Harpy Lady. If you're stuck on a budget because they are shooting up in price, yeah, Lady 1 would be about your best option. Two and three, they're just not feasible in the quick-paced meta we run in right now. But it's always something we have to think about. You know, like, we'll put it this way. The only wrong, the only time wrong and right applies is if you have unlimited access to information and or resources. If you don't, then of course you handle your game differently. And, and that those kind of arguments don't apply to you. But when you have the, the choice, you know... You have to go with the, the best, the best, you know, pick. And the you best gotta make the pick team strong. It's Cyber Harpy Lady. Just yeah, the Indeed. 2000 attack body. Um, so like, I want to go ahead and throw in a card for the old cards that are really good support for this because we touched on Sun, Summoner Monk. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that off the list. Um, we don't really need to talk about Harpy's Pet Dragon because I did mention it was player's choice. I myself like to run a copy. Mm. I mentioned that a player that I that I'm well acquainted with doesn't like it. So as long as it was mentioned that, you know, it gives you that access to rank seven. You really have to assess that when you're building your deck because it's quite dynamic. So like, I only have three cards left on my or left on my list. One be it's Sacred Crane, and I did touch on that a little bit because it's a waiting play for you. Um, you know, because you don't want to search your harpies out of the deck too fast unless you're doing it with Chandler because you want to keep Chandler and sometimes you even want to keep Egotus live. So you have to be aware that Sacred Crane gives you an option. So it's an immediate, you know, it, it gives you a return. You draw a card when you special summon it. But also the other a aspect of the card is if you run Sacred Crane, Sacred or a Summoner Monk into Sacred Crane immediately makes Black Lesser Soldier alive. And Black Lesser Soldier is an option for the deck for you. So uh, I guess that's all that really needs to be said about that. But it's also a Wing Beast. So it fits in with a card that I'm going to mark off the list, which is Icarus Attack. I mean, we could talk about these cards, but, you know, everybody knows what they do, but they have to be mentioned. So, like, the card I want to mention, uh, which is the last on my list, is Swallow's Nest. Um, for those of you guys who don't know what it does, it's a quick play spell card. You tribute one face-up winged beast type monster you control to special summon one winged be beast monster from the deck with the same level as a tributed monster. All your monsters outside of, if you're running Blacklisted Soldier, and if you're running Pet Dragon, are all level 4. Um, and then that's kind of key to um, how successful um, Swallow's Nest can be for you. Uh, a, a great example is, you summon Harpy Chandler, you discard 
to pay the cost to activate its effect. What are two things you really are going to hate to see in this situation? You're going to hate seeing the effect Valor fall from your opponent's hand, or you're going to hate to see him activate Fiendish Chain. Swallow's Nest provides a lot of things for the deck, and here's a situation. You get to dodge a Fiendish Chain or a Effect Veiler. You know, you pay the cost, they chain. Whichever one they chain, then you respond with Swallow's Nest. You tribute it, and now you can special summon, say, a Sacred Crane to put your opponent in, in an even more negative situation where you're gaining advantage off of, off of their uh, cards. But not only do you get that special summon of another level four wing beast, you also still get to resolve Chandler's effect because she's no longer face up on the field. And that's very, very important. And I guess probably one of the most important aspects is that dodge ability that Swallow's Nest gives you. Should you run two? Should you run three? Probably not. I think a lone copy can kind of, and I don't want to, you know, people to get me wrong here because I'm not equating Swallow's Nest to the same quality as Forbidden Lance, but it kind of gives you that, you know, where you summon something, your opponent thinks he has a response, and then you lance and protect yourself. This kind of does the same thing, though. It protects you from cards that you don't want to see because you don't want to go in the neg. You, this, this deck can give you the ability to gain advantage, and you want to do just that. And Swallow's Nest, you know, it helps you with that. You see, and when you mention, you mention, uh, your support cards one and you mentioned forbidden lance and this is just my idea of a support card for people not to forget especially if you run lance is a well forgotten card winged sage falcos basically he's a level four monster who's risa if he destroys a monster by battle then you get to put it back on top of your opponent's deck so He's a good tool, maybe at one or two in the deck itself. Because, again, he's a level four. He's a winged beast. So he's going to get boosted by grounds. He's going to go up to 1,900. If you're running lances anyways, and you've been able to pretty well control the spell and trap zone, it's a great way to put your opponent into a lock because you know what they're going to draw. I got an idea for a card, just in case somebody wants to run it. Well, what's your, what's your thoughts, uh, Eddie? My thought is, if there's another card that you want to throw in for support, it'd just be able to have it to where you can pull it to your hand, or being able to pull harpies to your hand. Um, Birdface. Mm. Just be able to pull, like, if you wanted to pull that uh, Harpy Lady 1, if you're not running Cyber Harpy Lady because she's damn expensive, you can use uh, Birdface to be able to go... I marry you, and then plus plus because of Harpy Lady One being able to increase all wind monsters on your side of the field by 300, plus with Harpy's Hunting Grounds giving it an extra 200, you get an extra 500 to all of your uh, wing beast slash wind type monsters. So you know it's a thought, and also why hasn't anybody else mentioned the obvious card and the biggest elephant in the freaking room? Icarus attack! I did. He did. Oh, you did? Oh, well, I wasn't paying yeah, attention. I just did. <laughs> I was like, I'm like half awake right now. Cause I need to go to bed. Here's one. Well, the biggest problem I have with Birdface is that he's going to be taking targets out of your deck for Hysteric Sign and Chandler. Yeah. That'd be the problem I had with him. The only other tech card I could think of that I think we haven't mentioned, and this is especially true if you side into... The obvious choice, if you like to smoke scream like I do, uh, in the Black Wings, Gale the Whirlwind. Of course. Gale's going to go up to 1,500, and you can have your opponent's beaters. So, and he's a tuner. He's a level 3 tuner. So, from support, the older cards, we look at the extra deck. So, definitely... First one we want to mention that's going to probably be best abused in Harpies is Lightning Chidori. He's a two level four wind monsters. When he's exceeds summon, target a set card your opponent controls, put it on bottom of their deck, and 
Once per turn, you can detach an Xyz material from the card to target one face-up monster, your, or one face-up card your opponent controls, and return that to the top of their deck. So yet again, I'm going to go back to Birdface. <laughs> this is a great way to put two cards on top of their deck and one card on the bottom in one turn. So other than the control you're already going to have with the Spell and Trap Zone with Hunting Grounds out, this is Lightning Chidori is yet another way to take control of the Spell and Trap Zone or the Monster Zone. It's a great way to bounce an Xyz monster. Oh, I'm going to detach an Xyz material, say goodbye to your Zen mains who was holding up my field, and I sent your possible D-Prison, Mirror Force, whatever, to the bottom. He only has 1,900 attack, 1,600 defense, but I think the ability kind of offsets that. Uh, what about you, uh, Ginzo? What's your thoughts on Chidori in the extra deck? Um, it's a definite one of, yeah, uh, at the least. You know, like uh, again, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, when it comes to multiples of a certain card, that's always going to come to the player and you know how they assess what they what they want. To have access to um for me it's a one of that's it yeah um but it's a one of that i really enjoy because when you get him on the field and he's good he's good yeah exactly. uh, but i've never had him and, and been like oh that's terrible why that i should you know it's a great option to have for the deck i think uh for me and i'm gonna look back at mine we'll just kind of uh talk about our specific extra decks for me like I said, my build is based around being able to side into Black Wings. So, since we don't have Graham yet, uh, my extra deck has Cataster, Armed Wing, Armor Master, and Stardust. The only reason I run Stardust is because this deck runs Starlight Road, because I want to protect my backfield. Um, then it runs one Pet Mirage Dragon, because it is... Highly dependent on Harpy, so, and it does have Hysteric Sign and other ways to special summons. So I have the chance of getting three out there. It also runs Shockmaster, so I have the option of either Chidori at one, Maestroke to stop destruction, uh, Levier, anything removed. I can bring back uh, Utopia. Some would say go with Gem Knight Pearl. I don't know. I just like the ability to stop an attack. Uh, gotcha, gotcha, just because of the side deck options. Uh, Zinbanes, of course, Black Ship of Corn, and number 30, and Big Eye. And Big Eye is just, uh, like I said, abusing Channeler and Pet Dragon. For me, I mean, that's kind of my standard lineup when I look at uh, how the Harpies run, at least in the build that I have built. Uh, but it also runs level threes in the Black Wings, and it runs the Tour Guide loop within the deck itself outside of just uh, the Harpies and running yeah. winged uh, Sage Falcos. So it has the ability to run... Anywhere from two to, of course, seven. But that's just my take on what I put into the extra deck in a Harpy build. Uh, a lot of it comes to player's choice. Like, uh, what's some examples of some things you're running in your side deck, or your extra deck, Genzo? Well, my extra deck, as you said, it, it doesn't have to support a uh, smokescreen. So my extra deck is solely focused on what Harpies do and what they do best. And uh, something you don't want to underestimate uh, whenever you're building your deck. Um, I don't know if it's how you feel. It's just a comment you made made me think that maybe you were worried about this deck's ability to put three monsters on the board to make uh, Shockmaster or, or Pet Mirage Dragon. It has no problem whatsoever putting three monsters on the on the field. So I wouldn't inv invest too much of your, your deck space into trying to do that since it can do that on its own. But... Um, as far as my extra deck goes, it's all rank four and rank seven. That's it. I run Gaga Gaga Cowboy to Abyss Dweller, um, because at this current moment, Mermail is is a deck you have to consider, um, and it's gonna it's gonna do work on you if you can't prepare for it. So I run the two Dweller, um, but one could easily be dropped. 
I actually only added the second one in when I dropped Starlight Road from my build. The only synchro I had at one point was Stardust Dragon for the road. Um, and it could come back in. It's one of those cards that I float around with because, like I said, Hysteric Sign is kind of like a face-up Starlight Road at times. But it's also not, and the opponent knows that. So if they want to push, they can. So that's one with there. Um, My Stroke, Steel Swarm Roach, a copy of Lightning Chidori. I don't like Diamond Direwolf as a card, although I see its quality, and I think it's best played in something like Windups because they have Rabbit and they can manipulate the game, you know, because they can activate its effect, target Windup Rabbit, and then chain Rabbit's effect to banish himself, so only the opponent this card um, is affected so that's nice but it is spot removal so uh, I do like having it there for that um, I run Black Ship of Corn and Papal Operative at the moment Papal Operative is another card that could be dropped in my opinion um, Queen Dragon Dragon Jin is a really neat card because this deck has very particular situations and I won't get into the combos that, that do like the big the, the big fields because I'm going to I have a discussion already made for Harpies. I just have to get the images put in, and it'll be posted on Midnight TCG, so look forward to that, guys. Um, but Queen Dragoon Dijin is part of that kind of situation where you can put uh, her, another Rank 4, and a Rank 7 on board at the same time. You know, of course, it, that, that kind of situation may be a little little situational, but it is something that happens in the deck naturally, so you have to kind of know it. Um, Utopia. Is, is just like a generic rank four option, you know? I'm, like I said, I'm just running all rank fours and two rank sevens. So, you know, I just put him in there. But it could be a Gym Knight Pearl. Like, players don't don't realize this, but Gym Knight Pearl has become like a skill drain card. Like, if you're afraid of skill drain, then your preference will probably have you running Pearl over Utopia. Um, so, like, and this deck does kind of lose out to skill drain, so maybe Pearl would be an option there. It does, What's uh... that? it skirts a fiendish chain as well. Yeah. So, like, it's that option as well. But I doubt your opponent's going to, if they're going to fiendish chain you, they're going to fiendish chain you before you Ixie summon. <laughs> right. Because your, your monster effects are going to lead you to the Ixie summon. Anyway, um, I'm also running Shockmaster, of course, because we can put lots of monsters on the field. But I'm also testing Vylon de Sigma. Um, I like the card. I wish it was better. Um, but I kind of feel it's better than the Mirage Dragon, the Ixies, so that's why I'm running it. Um, but again, it's one of those floating preference cards, so it can be dropped. And then the last two Ixies are Big Eye and Dragosack. Again, I'll state that those are probably going to become two of the most important Ixies monsters in the game here soon because of Elemental Dragons. Um, and this deck can, has access to both of them, so why wouldn't it run them? You know, they're just too good. You know, Big Eye allows you the, the, the dynamic ability to steal your opponent's investment drago sack allows you early game like you can like you never want to draw harpy's pet dragon ever like best case scenario you summon chandler discard a harpy card special summon <laughs> pet dragon doesn't always happen that way but when you can do it sometimes it's early in the game and you want to do it in early early game so you're not going to want to make big eye because your opponent's not going to have put anything on the the board for you to worry about so drago sack is that that option you know when big guy's not applicable when it's not you don't want to reveal that kind of utility for your opponent to to respond to early in the game drago sack is excellent i think it's an excellent card for any deck that can make it uh but that's my extra deck it's just pure rank four and then two great rank seven ixies what about you eddie ginzo covered it good night everybody <laughs> <laughs> well uh <laughs> I guess that's kind of uh, our uh, brief thoughts and discussion on uh, Harpies. Uh, don't take everything we say as gospel. You know, this uh, it does really come down to player's choice, but uh, we hope we give you some useful information, some ideas, maybe to toss around in your head, uh, maybe a little more information than you had previously about the type within itself, because... Harpies until lately have been a pretty well forgotten archetype that uh, now are starting to get a very beautiful engine that's uh, just stupid. <laughs> so, oh wait, did we forget to mention Sylphine? No, no, I mentioned Sylphine earlier in the Okay, thing. cool, cool, cool. Because that card's really goofy, and we don't want to forget it. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, just to kind of finish things off, uh, we still do have the deck of the month going on until the end of this month. So get your entries in by the 31st, which is next Sunday, because we record on Sundays. Uh, make sure uh, you're tuning in to our weekly championship series on Tuesdays. Get your chance to get in the Hall of Fame and uh, get bragging rights for the week and a nice little tag. Uh, have our flash tournaments going on. Currently, Keo's in the lead by five points. Eddie's telling right behind him. Uh, have fun, <laughs> Senator Australia, again, Fox. <laughs> the Grand Prix is kind of wrapping up. We want to give a welcome on board to... Uh, King Guy Pie, he is our newest moderator. We did say uh, St. Walker, uh, Nomad, and uh, Dark Angel all uh, stepped down as of re recently, so we want to thank them for all they have done for the site. But uh, I think we've pretty well covered everything we need to, and uh, we'll let Eddie dance us out. Okie dokie, so which, one, which dance are we doing this week, are we doing the tango, the foxtrot, the uh, the hip hop dance, or I mean, what are we doing? 